And we are live. What the hell? Why are there a bunch of like... Is that a real thing? I'm... Okay, I, I swear this wasn't the aside I was going to make. But I opened up Twitch on my, my, my tablet up here that I always look at for the chat. And like, all the suggested channels are like the... The, the the infamous I thought it was just a joke where like the girls are like topless but you can't see it because the camera's just like just cut off. Is that a real thing? Can we just do that on you on Twitch now? Do they not care? Josh, take off your it, shirt. It, it, it's skirting TOS, Manuel. <laughs> well, let's move on to something else. <laughs> anyway, and that's a real reaction. I didn't I did not expect I'd see I'm pointing at the wrong thing. I did not expect Manuel, to see I that. think that's more on what you watch than anything. It's on the A to J actually no that's mine actually but i don't watch anyone on twitch i have a very generic generic like you know i only watch a to j i use an account just to just to comment i really do i'm not even making that up so maybe that's just what, what they standardly show everyone now or maybe that's just the hottest stream like tonight the second but i don't follow anyone like except like a to j and all the a to j affiliates anyways 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 ultra podcast z episode 224 it's me your boy Manuel. what's up we're live. Josh, say hi. Hi. Yeah, it's Christmas time. We're talking about we're gonna be talking about Christmas stuff, Christmas music, and the usual amount of randomness. Did you see that Colorado said that Trump can't can't run again for president next year? The he can't be on the ballot. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that that like the, <laughs> that's big news. Yes. And this is clearly going to go to the Supreme Court. And I'm like, the Supreme Court really can't overturn. I mean, they can. I'm not saying they can't. Like, they can. They definitely can. But, like, imagine that. On, like, what would they say? <laughs> Insurrections are allowed. <laughs> they would say treason is shit if they did not make sure. That's that what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. it's like, it, it's a weird thing. It's like... And if they and if they do uphold it, then this gives other states the the obvious right to be like, you think California is not going to be like one of the next ones? Or, I mean, maybe they wouldn't. I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, if Colorado did it, is Colorado even a blue state? I, I didn't even know it was. Or maybe it's not. If it's not, that's even crazier. Okay, Manuel, what are we actually talking about this week? Blue states or red states? Is Colorado a blue state? I need to know this before we move on. I need to know how Texas ended up teaming up with uh, California in the Blue, Civil War manual. movie by H24. <laughs> Whenever um, the, other, the other day I was watching um, some old H-Bomber guy videos just because like, I saw one on Dragon's Lair. It turns to be really interesting, by the way. But uh, he, that's not the point I'm trying to make. But at some point he mentioned the video game, the video game History Museum is in Texas. And I'm like... Why is it in Texas? And I guess like, but Texas is just like, maybe it's just my my super basic bitch brain that doesn't know like tech. But wouldn't that make more sense in like Silicon Valley area or something? Yeah, but that's also more expensive, manual. I guess, but it's like, and in Texas, I, such a. I, I mean, I, you I, can start I, a museum I, for anything anywhere, manual, as long as you have the money. <laughs> I don't know. It was probably found... less expensive to have it there. <clears throat> At least that's what I'm assuming. Uh, like, uh, so I need to figure out what's it. Yeah, I was right. I had to make sure before I said anything. It's not even in Houston where you would think. It's in Dallas. And for those that don't know, Dallas is like landlocked kind of. So it's like it's not even in a, in a good part of Houston. <laughs> Sorry, all, all of our Dallas Texas. watchers. <laughs> anyways, anyways, anyways. Yeah, talk about Christmas stuff. Christmas music. It's Christmas time. What are you doing for Christmas, Josh? I'm going to hang out with family. It's going to be more so a Christmas Eve thing than Christmas. I figure like we celebrate Christmas the entirety of maybe about like um, three hours upon awake. <laughs> I mean, the, that's kind of the, that's kind of the norm. Like, it's funny because uh, every so often when I when I. Um, like when I'll talk to some of my friends when I was younger. I used to get teased about this. Obviously, like people always like, "Oh, Manuel doesn't know Spanish. He doesn't, you know, uh, know other Mexican things." And he celebrates Christmas on Christmas. Because <laughs> for those who don't know, it's a very common thing to celebrate. You know, Mexican households to celebrate it on Christmas Eve. Like that's when all the festivities are. Okay. Uh, no, I. What? What? Th that that has never come up in my Mexican household. 
Are you serious? We always celebrate Christmas on Christmas. I've never like you are the anomaly too. Then are you are you guys are you guys Mexican Mexican like from Mexico from Tota Tiche? Because a, a lot of my family, uh, not to get too deep in the weeds here, a lot of my family, especially on my dad's side, that we used to like that used to that, that did do this, were like of questionable legal status. Let's just say, <laughs> you know, uh, just keep it real and um, and. It was always the Christmas Eve thing. As a matter of fact, we would go to their house to celebrate it, and it would blow my mind because they'd be opening cr- all their presents on Christmas Eve, and it's like, what are, what are you guys doing? <laughs> it's tomorrow, and like they'd have all the big dinner then, and then in the morning maybe they'd open up some of the few shit they didn't celebrate in the morning, and then you know just like watch TV or whatever. Like like it, the the fun was done. It's like Animal Crossing. I don't know if you play Animal Crossing, but Toy Day is on the eve, <laughs> so it's like uh, I don't know. I love Christmas. It was, it was more so the um, not not the the toy thing. I'm just describing the um, Christmas Eve thing. I remember that the kids would open up gifts at midnight on like yeah. Christmas Eve, going into Christmas type of deal. My uh, my fam. What is this? Most Mexican uh, celebrate. Most Mexicans celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve to stay awake. Yeah, until midnight. Exactly. Uh, I probably should have said that earlier because that that is what I meant. I don't mean to say they're opening their presents at like seven p.m. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah. So I should I should I should have clarified that a bit. I meant more like we show up like actually we show up really late like a seven or eight. You know we we party like there's always the uncle who gets really fucking drunk. I guess that's me now. You know <laughs> shit like that. We, we celebrate the guests of Christ. <laughs> Yes, but I do agree. It's pretty much staying up until midnight. But yes, to yeah. the birth of Christ, <laughs> the birth of yeah, the birth of Christ. I remember uh, when I was young, I used to um, my family would let me open. Well, my parents would let me open one gift on Christmas uh, at midnight, I should say, and then the morning could open the rest. So I'd always have one picked aside. I told part of the story before. I told this part of the story where I used to uh, tear little pieces off the paper, off the wrapping paper to see what was inside, try to guess. <laughs> and then one time I even unwrapped one by, like, by taking off the tape, and then I realized I did not know how to wrap a gift. So I had to just like... <laughs> I had a, I kind of folded it back and then just squished everything on one side and like put that side on the ground so like you couldn't see it unless someone else moved it and prayed that no one touched it. And only because I don't have a story of somebody discovering it, I think I got away with it. <laughs> but anyway, I remember when I had that the the thing to open one Chris one present, I used to stay up till midnight at home and I would watch the Star Wars trilogy like on VHS so it was like the cool one that wasn't like special edition yet so I would watch it on VHS like you know like all six movies I mean six movies three movies starting like at like 6 p.m. or so and I'm talking like pre prequels but yeah what are you saying oh I just said that's interesting like most of the time all I really do have is just Christmas movies in my celebrations uh Though, since we pretty much are, are at the uh, 24th, going into the 25th, and we're talking about Christmas music before we lose the plot. Oh, yeah, um, I forgot. What we're talking because about Christmas I general. already know what's coming. I already know what Christmas thing is coming since you brought up Star Wars. But first, um, <laughs> how do you rank Los Peces en el Rio, pues, in terms of a Christmas song? The what? what you, you, don't, you don't know? What song is that? Los, Los Peces en el Rio. It's that song that talks about the Virgin Mary because she's like over by the oh. nativity. Oh, I know that song. Oh my God. You unlock some childhood memories right there. <laughs> Fun fact, I haven't heard this in like ages. I'm listening to it right now. There's like it... four different versions. Well, yeah, I'm listening to um, or maybe there's like actually like over 16 if you count all of the there's like always a new like Christmas uh, CD that'll come out that's like either a well-known singer or a random ass group of singers that like cover it but I'm pretty sure is this traditional song? what is this? I'm pretty I'm sure to Pandora up. was like the yeah. first one a Pandora is the one I recognize yeah I like Sparks like the Sparks cover okay this is a banger though <laughs> it's got to go to all the playlists. I have not thought about the song in forever. I mean, like, I gotta, I, I gotta admit, like, I, I, I had a very Coca Cola Christmas growing up, 
like okay. in a weird way because we were like poor as fuck and like you know ghetto as fuck maybe it was just wishful thinking on my family's part but yeah we had a very like stereotypical you know white bread christmas we never had a real tree but we used to have a really nice fake one when i was younger and like you know mm -hmm. decorate we, we, we my mom used to have a ton of christmas decorations and uh, yeah it was fun we played music all the time she would have what state i think the station still does it there's like a local station in socal like that will that after thanksgiving they'll just i'm sure this is nationwide too in other stations but there's one specifically in socal that i always think of because which i can't remember of course because they would play christmas music non-stop from thanksgiving to christmas and yeah this was never on there though racist bastards <laughs> So my, on my end, since you brought up the tree, all I've ever known is a fake tree. I've never had a real tree for Christmas because oh, all yeah. I've ever had. And, like, it's changed. So we, we used to have this one, like, forever. And then eventually, like, as we moved to different houses, we'd eventually get a new one over the years. But yeah, I've never had a real Christmas tree. And I'm not sure what the cost, price, effectiveness is of it is because i even got a christmas tree randomly just in case i've ever, ever wanted one from walmart and they had uh -huh. like one with lights already on it and everything for like i want to say like a hundred and ten dollars wait a fake one yeah a fake one that's a, it's lot a pretty good things. size too wait how much does a real tree cost do you know Jamie? i don't know i've never had a real tree before but part of me would wonder if like how much do they charge you for that tree because i imagine it's still gotta look pretty good it's got that pine smell on it and everything but like how, how what is the cost effectiveness of having a real tree okay i just uh, googled it right now yeah and apparently google says 80 something dollars yeah 80 to 100 the thing? depending on yeah. the size of the tree so, and I guess in theory, you're going to say that you could reuse the fake one, but yeah, that just sounds like a lot of money. <laughs> That's insane. So the For 120 the record, or the 80? The 120. Well, both. <laughs> it's well, 120, but like you'll have that for like what? six years the better part of six years at least i'm not gonna uh, lie and i'm thinking about doing it for the one i have now i bought one from five below that was five dollars and uh, i'm probably gonna leave it up until it falls apart <laughs> Wait, is it a, like a real tree that's oh, it's like... Oh, fake. I, it's, okay. it's like four feet tall. Fake. I wish I could show... Uh, oh, oh, four I'll, feet I'll, tall. I'll take a picture. You can't show us a tree on your green screen. It's going to disappear. Exactly. I'm going to take a picture <laughs> and send it to JD, because I actually do have a picture of it floating around, and then he'll just put it on... The, it'll be floating around somewhere here on YouTube. But yeah, I have a, I have a four-foot tree that I have a bunch of like uh, Dollar Tree oh. ornaments on it and uh, a, a, a set of battery-powered lights I got off of Amazon. So it's like the cheapest tree setup you've ever seen. But it looks it's cute. still the tree setup, especially yeah, if like let's say you have a counter and you put the tree on the counter and you could just line up all the presents near it. Also, uh, I noticed here it says um, underneath, "What's your favorite Christmas song?" I also see it say, "I could never do a real tree." I've heard so many horror stories about the bugs, and I did I've not even heard... stop to think that I've you could be like Trojan that. horsing your house to like, like all of the 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 pests that are trying to survive the winter. <laughs> you want to hear a scary story that I that like? Okay, sorry, this is bad out topic, but this made me think of this immediately. I'll tell it fast. Yeah. So one time I went to Taiwan and I bought all these puppets, like these hand puppets, and they're like oh toy puppets, and they're like they're wood and cloth and whatever. And I bought a ton of them, like enough that I was scared that I was going to stop coming into the country. That I was like trying to like bring things to sell because you're not supposed to do that, obviously. And I'm, I wasn't minding you. This is like obviously. my own collection, and I brought them with me. And I did notice that when I was packing them in my bag, I'm like, how are there like suddenly like these bugs in my hotel room? Because I'm like I'm in a this room doesn't even have a window and the hotel's kind of nice. And I'm like, what the hell's happening? So anyways, I, I pack them, I get home and I open them all up and lay them on the ground to like, just to take a picture of them all. And suddenly mm -hmm. I see all these, not, not like, I don't want to make it like an army, but there was like more than five, less than 10 bugs come out of the fucking puppets and bolt throughout my room. <laughs> and I'm like, and they were, the kind of they were they, they were like these kind of like small not cockroach not, not like they were these small like beetle mite things that i've never seen before so I'm like, I, I really just, hope they had a natural predator in southern california otherwise manual might have completely destroyed the ecosystem 
<laughs> that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, oh my god. I I hope they. And I was thinking that too in my head. I'm like, I hope those things don't have the ability to survive here, because there was enough that realistically. First of all, I didn't have no weird foreign bug problem in the room. So if, if potentially they died, but I also wasn't there that long. That was a weird fact. So I don't know. But yeah, I'll never forget that. And now that makes me think like what, trees might have to say trees have to have bugs. That's yeah, just... no, that's yeah. I I would imagine it from the tree, the, the puppets. Holy crap. I almost thought there was going to be like a termite story or something. No, the, like the, the... I don't think like and I actually looked it up because for one thing, I had to look it up. I'm like, are termites like black and run they're neither of those things like termites are kind of clearish and they're slow moving so the, right. these these bolted like as soon as they, they saw freedom they, they took their chance they saw their chance and they took it <laughs> let's just hope that the nothing nothing was introduced to our ecosystem that was that bad and we're like slowly feeling ramifications it's like it's oh. like the it's like the bullfrogs in, in australia thing like the like everyone's wondering what where where the do the new like taiwanese beetle like why we have this influx in southern california and i'm like mm. it's manuel's fault <laughs> um okay so before we move on to the next okay. thing um how do you feel then about the song oh christmas tree it's funny you bring that up now i used to love okay i'm not a huge fan of a lot of the kid songs but they have a special place in my heart but there's a really cool Christmas album called The Crypt Keeper's Christmas. Oh, hey. And there's, oh, Mo, wait, oh, Christmas trees. Mo Titanbaum. That's the, I'm going to sing the song in my head to get the melody because some of them are so confusing. It's Mo, Mo Titanbaum or something like that. It's all these parody songs of like the traditional ones, and it's great. So I do like the old Christmas tree melody. I'm just not a huge fan of old Christmas tree. I think it is public domain, so we could sing it. But yeah. <laughs> A lot of them aren't. That's one of the big issues. Do you like a yeah. Christmas tree? Uh no, nah, I could I could do without. I I feel the Grinch in the 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 early two thousands movie is probably like this is a problem with capitalism. You know, but it it kind of <laughs> gets that vibe or so. What about the Grinch song? You're a mean one, <laughs> Mister Grinch. Oh yeah, you want to talk about uh, that copyright one on that one? Banger. It is <laughs> yeah. a uh, ten out of ten. I Especially agree. if you actually can sing it, or I don't know if I would say sing it, I'd say you just have to like talk it very deep and then points if you can get all the individual parts, yeah. especially the extended version of it. Because I they, they would play the short version, um, the most, but later I would hear that there's the extended version, which is just once again the like most petty way of describing somebody <laughs> and uh yeah that's what makes it that's what makes it top tier brian setzer does a, for the brian setzer orchestra i should say more specifically does a really good cover of that song but yeah and that makes me remember like there's a lot of good songs like that i think about like licensed ones we shouldn't be singing that are also kids like kid or maybe they're all kid friendly mostly but uh that reminds me of um the chipmunk songs actually called the chipmunk song officially the the, the christmas tree yeah like me i want a who <laughs> <laughs> i i don't think i like the 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 alvin chipmunks one but there are some cool covers of that one <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I would say that just hearing the original is a good way of getting the, the energy of Alvin yeah. and the Chipmunks. But otherwise, if I uh, like, and here's the weird thing when I was working in the office, not necessarily when I was in the uh, what's it called, like working retail, I think a cover of it would come out in retail. But when I was working in the office for the body shop, they just straight up played the Alvin and the Chipmunks version, and so. When that song started coming out a little bit too much, I honestly was like about to like explode and be kind of like, <laughs> yeah, when when are we getting Adam his goddamn hula hoop so he can shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> shut him up. Get him his hula hoop. We, we don't need to hear this song again. Um, I don't know. But it's I, catchy. It is catchy. Yeah, I used to have I used to have that on a well, I don't think it was mine or I, I don't even might have been my mom's because it like I don't want to make it sound like I'm this old, but we used to have that on record when I like in my house when I was a kid, and I used to always play it. And on the record, you could also speed up or slow down, so you could make Alvin sound kind of normal, you know, uh, <laughs> the voice at least. The rest of the song just sounded weird, but you could make him yeah. sound like you know not like <laughs> not not singing weird. Because if I'm not mistaken, that's the way they got the Alvin voice back in the day. He, they just sung it really slow and then they sped it up or some shit. 
Um, right? Am I making that, that up? I think I think that's the only like that. way they got it. Anyway, does that, make, does that make the first Alvin and the Chipmunks live action a Christmas movie? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Isn't is that that's in the? I know it's in one of the movies. It's the first one, then, right? Yeah. Is that, is that the first hit? I barely remember the plots of these movies. Yeah, that, uh, it's the first hit because it's one of those first Alvin the Chipmunk songs. So, well, it, I think it is the first real Alvin the Chipmunk song, which is why it's called the Chipmunk song, even though mm. it's, it's it's weird to call it that. I, I, I've seen it because like a lot of covers. Because once again, I, I love Christmas. Music. I have like tons of shit. I have like three versions of that on my various playlists, but most of the time it's covered. They call it Christmas. Don't be late. And I guess that's kind of its like official title when you're not like chipmunksing it. But yeah, it's the chipmunks song guess, otherwise. I mean, and I mean that's a that's an understandable. And I think I like it a bit more when it's not necessarily the chipmunk voice. But I always thought like it would be funny if you have like domestic abuse in the song <laughs> just to ironically take away from like the the Alvin being you know such a uh, eager you know such a uh what's it called do you, wait do you john his name is john is his name john yes. also like you want john to punch alvin is that what you're saying <laughs> you want john like i'll give you your fucking hula hoop. <laughs> um man i'll give yeah, you a no, reason it's, to it's complain. just a it's just a bad it's just a bad funny take i just i just really find it funny when like part of the song even is just dave like shouting at alvin for like being ADHD for like two seconds or something. Yeah, sorry, man. His like, name is Dave, not John. John is from Garfield. Yeah, like I just assumed that his name was John also because like usually these have very all American names. But okay, God. So we're talking about just beating up Alvin now. That that, that feels. I'm not gonna lie. Even though we said that we're kind of implying something different, that feels like. Oh no no no! Be- I wasn't saying. I wasn't saying for Alvin. I was just saying if you would have the the uh, what's it called uh, covers. You know, whoever's singing oh, the song. Oh, like instead, like mimic. Okay, because I, I was thinking that too. Because whenever it's a cover, they don't do any of the spoken bits. So it's never yeah. like okay, <laughs> like you know, yeah. man, all that so, bullshit. It, it's kind of so, like uh, that. That just get cut out. So, but <laughs> speaking, speaking of a duo, speaking of a duo song, I honestly don't know if this song is actually new because I've never heard it until like I want to say 2016. No, you know what? No, I don't think it was 2016. I'm like trying to remember this song because I heard it during the same office job. And I remember hearing it more so during my second Christmas and I think my first Christmas. But the timeline could be the timeline could be effed in my head. So I'm going to say that um, a Honey, It's Cold Outside song. Oh, Baby, It's I Cold Outside. I never heard it until like the that job in particular. So what are your thoughts on it because there's like so many oh, different i think the can. og go ahead is the og the the really deep the the sultry ass guy's voice is that the like the very original because i don't know like who the very... guy is but the girl is Anne margaret i know that right okay. so, I, I think so this. um uh, baby it's cold outside it's funny because like that's one of the weird songs where um it's christmas for sure but yeah. it's not technically Christmas, like in terms of like the no, hell, it's just Michael cold Buble. Outside. Everything I'm looking up is Michael Bublé. Sorry, I'm kind of. Oh no, Michael Bublé has a cover of it, and I think that one's a very um. That cover does what a different version of the song felt weird when it did it. There's like, like obviously people are gonna like want to do a duet, but there's a version of it that I like to call the go woke and make it weirder than it already was and in this song it's like it, it's kind of implied that the two people just decide that they are gonna like spend the night together um despite the fact that that first the woman kind of like is just not feeling it but later feels it uh, and i want to get to that later but um there is this version where the girl by the end of the song just like it's very apparent because they add extra parts in the middle of the song where uh the girl just says no and it sounds very awkward it's like very much a situation where this one guy was trying to come onto this girl and by the end of it she says no to him but the song still kind of has to end with like the main um main chorus and it feels awkward and then there's like the michael buble version which is like able to fix it by not making it odd by the end of the song. And instead, Michael Buble has this line added in his song where the girl goes, you know, you're really persistent. And he says, I like to think about it as opportunistic. <laughs> but the one line that is just very weird, 
throughout all versions is the fact that the girl says, "Hey, what's in this drink?" Oh, yeah, cause that, because that's a lot that everyone points to. It's so like, do they mean that literally? I'm not gonna lie. Because it's alcohol, lie. you know. Yeah, it's exactly. like it's gotta be alcohol, but. You know, when the girl literally is like, hey, what's in this drink? You know, you, that's that's like the type of thing where I'm just kind of like, yeah, this this song gives off all the wrong all the wrong vibes, um, which is why I think they made that one song where the girl just straight up is like very, they're very much saying by the end of the song, like, nope, not we're not doing it together. And the guy's like, yeah, fuck you then. Like his voice <laughs> is saying like that. Um, for the record, uh, like I want to say, what's in this drink? Like I'm not saying the song isn't weird or like that's a weird line to put in there, but I will say that I, I've definitely said that. Maybe is that the implication always behind that saying? Because a lot of times when you're when you're you're drinking something and you say something weird, it's like oh man, what's in this drink? And is that uh, uh, in my head, I always assume that to be like oh I'm saying like how much alcohol is in this, but is that another way of saying like I've been. I, it would probably it, I it think would probably the, be better to have said stuff like something more direct because to imply hey what's in this drink makes it seem like you either do get the response where it's like oh damn you mix this very well how much alcohol is in it or you get the people yeah. that are like you know it's almost like did she ask for like the egg did she ask for like the hard eggnog or the regular eggnog <laughs> and like the brandy in there anyway yeah uh, if I may <laughs> yeah. intrude uh, uh -huh. it's also kind of used in I think old timey either literature or like movies as a hey i'm starting to act how people wouldn't expect me to like if someone starts talking about things they're not supposed to be talking about like because they know some guy is going to come like gun them down or something in, like a gangster movie it's like what are you putting this you got me loose lipped or you're making me oh. behave how society would not expect me to behave so like staying over with your boyfriend would not have been permitted but he's giving her all the reasons she's saying okay maybe i'm warming up to this i think is one interpretation yeah. of it I thought I say like it's very open ended and it's funny because I like I, I've heard this song a lot even though it's not really one of my favorites because it's it's it, it's it's a weird kind of duet it's like the call and repeat duet that I'm not a huge fan of in general, um, and I was just like oh but I've always heard that line and I've sung that line like you know I'm like I'm 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 all I'm all genders equal when it comes to singing any lyrics so I'll sing that line and I'm like oh shit <laughs> I never thought it was questionable until i started seeing those articles about like you know five or six years ago and then again and i don't want to for the record i do want to say right now for all of you saying that's a new argument and technically it was new to me too um people have been saying this apparently forever it's just that like it never really caught traction you know it needed like it needed a weird like it needed to happen in the, in the wake of the me too movement for people to, to like hey maybe that is a little odd i don't know if it is um i don't like the song though <laughs> if that makes sense like that would be a definite like we're not doing a tier list even though that was the part of the original idea i mean because i just didn't feel the need to because i didn't know how well you know some of the more obscure christmas songs i would have wanted to talk to so i didn't fit and talk about so i didn't want to do it now i kind of wish we had but that would have definitely just been like a d-list song just because i don't i just don't like it very much <laughs> i i also am not too big of a fan not because of reasons about it being like inappropriate i, I actually like it, yeah. liked it I, I like it because it seems funny how uh, i know i just said i didn't like it but i mean like the thing about the song that i like is that between the versions i've heard is that you can have a different interpretation like if you're doing like a oh, shakespeare yeah. play with it um but overall it's one of those songs where i was hearing way too often on repeat and i was just kind of like overall just being like i i get it it's cold outside i'm not feeling like <laughs> i would rather have been like let it snow let it snow let it snow which is like the exact same thing you know what song is oh it is what song is yeah. wait what song is that called let it snow I like let, it snow. I, I, let it snow let it snow let it snow yeah i thought it? the implication afterwards was that like you know it's called you know um because it's pretty much the same thing like it's um honey have you got no place out to go because you know it's so cold outside and everything uh you know let it snow let it snow let it snow I, I like to also think that it's a get it on song just as I grew up. <laughs> it just kind of feels like, you know. <laughs> For the record, I had to look it up to make sure if I said anything. For the record, um, Let It Snow and a few of the other ones are like kind of like those. Though, I don't even know if this it definitely it, there is a f version that's made famous by them. Apparently, they're telling me Vaughn Moore original, Monroe recorded originally. But whenever I hear it, it's always like a Rat Pack member, like Frank Sinatra or someone singing it. So a lot of oh, those Frank songs. Yeah, a lot of songs from that era were meant to also be like kind of like, hey, 
girl. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> let's get warm. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely see Frank Sinatra like making anything very classy with that jazz spin, and then just just yeah, yeah. I I totally feel that. Um, but yeah, I do you think have it's any... cold outside. <laughs> do you have any particular favorite like? cover frank sinatra did of like the um any christmas song or anything like that yes and no it's funny you bring this up because he's gonna bring up one of my least favorite christmas songs of all time and it's funny because it's so iconic i am not a huge fan of white christmas um yeah, that's a val- i'm gonna say that's a valid take but he i believe it's him i mean i can't i mean i know he's done a cover a version of it for sure i just don't know if it's his that i'm thinking of in my head it's an old crooner version but like somebody does a does a version of it that i'm like i can stand that one because like the deeper voice and everything like that but i don't like that song at all and it, i hate that it's such a classic and it's not a traditional one so that's the annoying thing i'm like people are paying money to keep doing that song <laughs> why uh manual oh, f- fucking huh I think the famous version you're thinking of is Bing Crosby. Oh, it is Bing Crosby. Okay, so that's who I'm thinking of for the record. But but everything else I said still stands. That it's like it's not even it's covered. I think Frank Sinatra did do a version of it, but that's not the version I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan of White Christmas. Um, I'm also now that we're on the the topic of like you know Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. It depends on a mood. But like the Frank Sinatra and the fucking Elvis Christmas songs, I have to be in the mood for them. And there's a lot of both. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to talk have a blue Christmas. Oh, I love Blue Christmas. Talk... I just don't like the Elvis Blue Christmas. If we're, if we're going to talk celebrities then, okay, if we're, if we're really getting down with Christmas, um, <laughs> then... The, the one celebrity, I think, to rule them all. Wait, hold up. Delulu God on. just chimed in. Wait up, no. wait up. Delulu God chimed in. The exactly. Jackson I'm Five... laughing. Okay, you want to talk Jackson 5 songs? Hold on. And this kind of ties into what you said about celebrities, because sort of Michael Jackson. I saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I don't know if that's a Jackson 5 original. I feel like it is. But I'm going to Google if it real The fun. way that Michael Jackson Manual, sings in it. I'll look it up. Me. You keep talking. Okay. I think it's a Jackson Five original, but definitely their version was uh was one of the iconic ones. And there's a ton of versions of it. That song is wild. <laughs> <laughs> like I still laugh at that now because it's like, is that? <laughs> is I I know the idea is it's meant to be the dad, right? Or is it? Yeah, it's meant that's what to I'm be asking. the dad. That's what I thought. Or is it because? <laughs> Like there's no line saying and I, I had a, I, I should probably check it out, but I don't think there's a line at all where he's all like, "I went to go tell my dad, but my dad's not home," because there is a line which is, "I'm going to tell my dad." Well, I think yeah. the the implication is that it is supposed to be his dad, but if we're saying that due to the fact that their dad was kind of an abusive piece of shit that she was like oh, yeah. cheating <laughs> on. Oh, uh, what's it called? That she was cheating on him, and I'm I'm not trying to say that from a stereotypical standpoint. Uh, stereotypical standpoint. Sorry, I don't know why I couldn't talk, but it's very, very basic knowledge, at least when looking into uh, the history of the Jackson Five, that like their dad was a piece of shit. Apparently, it existed before then, but the Jackson Five made it famous. I just checked this out right now. I don't know if JD was going to ever mention. That. I posted yeah, it in sorry. chat. Oh, that's wild to me because their version is the one I always hear. Uh, also, Michael Jackson's great in that ver- that, that version, but uh, yeah, that's the song is wild because the song is like, okay, is this mom just really looking out for him? And like, I'm gonna get you some good gifts this year. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I I don't know, I don't know. It's just uh, I I just uh, recall when I ended up hearing this song, I actually did not hate it on the repeats. I think it's only because both the song that's being sung and then the like people in the background with the Jackson five in commentary. Yeah. I think it just happened to roll like really well together. Um, Bottoms not is the muscle. To... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, not bringing, not bringing like any other like heavy or dark tone to it. I, I was just kind of like, yeah, um, that was actually really good for Delulu God to like chime in. Like, I like that they interrupted me with that because that is actually a pretty good, like celebrity based song. And like, even though it's not, an OG, like that's still pretty. Um, I think it's pretty OG. Like, okay, 
I, I'm a huge fan of listening to like metal and rock covers of Christmas songs. And be- yeah. just because of that song, it, I mean, because also it's Jackson 5 and they they definitely have like a more rock tinge to them as well. But I mean, also because it's like, oh, it's kind of questionable lyrics. Um, that one is, um, I have so many versions of that by so many rock people just because it's like, yeah, I'm going to sing about like that Justin Bieber drummer boy goes hard. <laughs> okay. I don't know about Justin Bieber, and that's nothing to do with whether I like him or not. I just don't like Little Drummer Boy for the record. But then again, I never heard Justin Bieber. Maybe he's gonna sell me. Actually, uh, Justin Bieber has he has a pretty good it, Christmas song. Uh, it, was it Shorty Where Are You? I haven't. Is that really what it's called? Oh, look it up. Look it up. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's <laughs> not that even that really? long. But look it up. Look, Shorty Where Shorty Where You sure. like. Oh my God, Shorty with look, oh look, what no, the fuck? trust me. Listen to it and tell me that it is not it's not a bop. Oh, the missile. Okay, well, I'm putting it up. But anyway, so okay, this one's pretty good. Did you really <laughs> wait? Who wrote this? This sounds like a what's, what's that guy's name? This sounds like hold on, I gotta look. Sorry, hold on. Well, apparently, anyways. Going back to Justin Bieber and to Little Drummer Boy, that version of Drummer Boy I do kind of like. Who does it? David Bowie and what's that? Was it Bing Crosby? Uh, the famous one. Keep going, man. Starting with it. you. I'm I'm trying to still look up the whole. Did Justin Bieber write Mistletoe? The song was written by Bieber. Okay, it was written by P- Bieber. It is written by him. It sounds like someone else. Though. I can't put my finger on it. Anyway, you don't have a good Christmas album, Ali and AJ. Oh hey! Um, oh, there's a Disney. There's a Dis- some, some Disney names I haven't heard in a while. Well, I remember I used to like the um, fuck. What was the collection called? There's this collection of Christmas albums, like a, a compilation that comes out. It used to come out like, every couple years, and one of them, and it's not. It's not. Ugh, fuck! I can't remember the name of it. It's like one of those now. That's what I call Christmas, but it's not that. But it's like one of those type collections. And one yeah. of them became very Disney-fied because I remember it was like, oh, shit, this must have been the year when Disney was popping off because it, like half the covers are like Miley Cyrus and like, uh, what the fuck's the other one's name? The, the, the Hannah Montana. Not that is Hannah Montana. The other one, the Lizzie McGuire girl. Hillary oh, Duff, Hillary Duff. And then like, yeah. And then like, I think Ashley Tisdale's on it. So like, it's like, what the fuck is this compilation? But anyway, but yeah, Ellie and H.E. Do, do have a good album. Apparently, Ali and AJ are like just a decent group, and I say that. Don't get me wrong; <laughs> that makes it sound really, like I'm being really mean to them. But I mean to say, when I went down the rabbit hole, because I think Callie mentioned their album to me like years ago on a, on a on a podcast, actually, funny enough. And I went to go listen to it. And I'm like, wait, Ali and AJ have real music that isn't just Disney Channel fodder. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's shocking. Hey, they they were fodder, so that. Uh... Uh, Miley Cyrus could run. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Uh, Miley Cyrus. I want, I'm sure she has a good Christmas album out there. I don't know. But no, another an, another like cool, like questionable song. You ever heard Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer? <laughs> uh, heard or watched? Oh, see? See, I'm glad you knew where I was eventually going to go with this. Yeah, there's a really... F- the cartoon, right? The The movie? Yes. That they used to play that movie a lot when I was young. I'm not sure where if that was on real TV or cable, but I watched that movie and I'm like, what the fuck is this? This because... movie was actually, you know what? I'm gonna call this out right now. This is my take. This is my take on Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Okay, mm-hmm. I hope you have your your uh, what's it called, listening devices close by, because here's what I genuinely think about that movie. Full stop. And this was a warning that was given to everyone. And we did not, we, we, we just either forgot about it or this movie was allowed to actually exist in the Christmas zeitgeist. But I genuinely believe that Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer is 100% AI generated. <laughs> Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. <laughs> oh my First god. Off, what does that even mean to be a Christmas oh, story, wait. let alone For a the record. song? For the record, I do want to point out that up in, and I don't know, somebody, I'm sure somebody's going to say Manuel's just talking out of his ass again, but it wasn't until a couple years ago that I learned how big a moose was. Like, <laughs> did, 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 did you know how big a moose is? A moose is, like, bigger than a car. And then, 
I th- I thought they were the size of a deer, and I also thought a reindeer was the size of a deer. Well, okay, a reindeer is not as big as a moose, but my point to bringing all the moose and the deer shit up is that a reindeer is somewhere in the middle. And if a rain and if a reindeer has if it's a reindeer that has antlers, it's gonna be a it's, wait. Okay, back up. So if the reindeer has antlers, it's gonna be a male one. And if it's a male one, they can grow up even bigger than what you typically see, like at most like petting zoos or whatever that have them. They're huge. They're yes, like fam. that motherfucker. If it was running at you at full speed, that fucker would hurt you bad. Would okay. it run you over that and fucker. kill you? Maybe not. But it might kill grandma. <laughs> Listen. That fucker was not running at full speed. That fucker was flying, okay? It was imbued with the power of magic. And on a low takeoff, <laughs> collided with Granny. Oh, so the actual cartoon, from yeah. <laughs> physics, from a physics perspective, you have a reindeer who is running at first, but is now flying, okay? So if we use the the graph of a distance over time, <laughs> um, we we can see that Granny was hit with um, I, I don't know, I'll 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 say like uh, seven tons of force coming at her, G force wise. So the fact that Granny somehow survived for. A, a court case to occur means that <laughs> yes. she is stronger than Goku. I, I survived getting run over by a reindeer. I played Dark Souls. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> no, that movie was wild because like the movie had a time jump and everything. It was like, what is what is happening? It takes it so seriously. Like Grandma got run over by a reindeer. She was walking. <laughs> Maybe she had. It's funny because when I was a kid. And there was a whole line about maybe it has too, maybe she had too much eggnog. And I remember specifically asking my parents or my mom specifically, like, um, like what they meant by that. And she mentioned that eggnog gets you drunk. So when I was when I and I was still really young, and I remember when I the very first time somebody offered me eggnog, and it was like my grandmother or somebody from my mom's side. And I was like, oh, how scandalous! And I drank it. I was like, oh damn! I'm like I'm I'm an adult now. I'm drinking fucking alcohol. I didn't know that. My point is, I didn't know that eggnog can just be eggnog. And why my mom implied that it was always going to have alcohol, I don't know. But yeah, I grew up thinking that she didn't want to share it, Manuel. <laughs> she didn't want I, you to hog I, the I, nog. I I hate eggnog for the record. Okay, I have a love hate relationship with eggnog too. Uh, <laughs> I always think it's going to be good until I kind of drink, and it always tastes all oh, oh, right drinking a bit of it, but then it starts getting really nasty really fast. This is this is what happens when you have something only one time a year. You are given enough time to forget about it, <laughs> be reinvited by the novelty, and then regret your decisions all the same. And I don't think I've ever, which is weird because you would think Manuel has, but I've never had it with alcohol. And the very idea, and I've always wanted to, and every time nobody wants to try it with me, but I always think about it. It's only because I don't want to do it by myself. If I'm getting sick, we're all getting sick kind of thing. You know, I'm always afraid it's going to get me sick. Like, they always tell you not to drink alcohol and milk together. And I know that's not milk. But it feels milk adjacent enough <laughs> that it is not going to sit in my stomach together. You know what I mean? It's going to be like, oh, boy, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do? I just have mimosas. That should be the new Christmas tradition, just mimosas. <laughs> Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Maybe it was too much mimosas. The reindeer was drunk. I, I'll, I'll gladly, I'll gladly enjoy a world where I don't listen to that song that often, <laughs> if not yeah. less and less each passing year. I'm not a fan. I'll be real, yeah. Like I, I, there's a cover too that I think are listenable only because that song has such. That song has a. It's not even country. That song has like a weird bluegrass vibe to it but not a good bluegrass vibe to it <laughs> i'm just like yeah it, the movie's fine the song is funny i just don't care about that version really it, it reminds me a lot of it, it's just funny because it sounds nothing like it but whenever i think of grandma got run over by a reindeer i put it in the same like category i put like the dominic the donkey is that the song uh the christmas donkey uh, mm-hmm. i always put that one in that that cap where i'm like it's funny you can laugh at it maybe put it on when everyone's drunk and you're like what the fuck is this but no i wouldn't listen to it 
Uh, before we before we get more into the things, what's your favorite Christmas song? Do you have one? Actually, uh, I was about to say my favorite Christmas song, and this will lead us back into the thing. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay, so this one's a doozy. I was thinking of a different one when it came to the celebrity thing, but I think it might just be better to leave my original idea for later because I think it's the only thing dominating the oh, charts. We're opening right now. grandma's gifts. Sorry, I saw the poll ending with four votes for opening grandma's <laughs> gifts. <laughs> open them. Yeah, I, I I put it up to a poll. Do we open up grandma's gifts or send them back? And it seems to be unanimous that we send we open them up. <laughs> anyway, at the end of the song. Saying... Okay. Oh, yeah. So send them back. okay. Send them back. Anyways. <laughs> so uh the the song, if we dial it back to Ashley Tist, uh no mm, it's, fuck. I didn't mean to do that. Uh <laughs> if we dial it back to Ali and AJ and we uh-huh. think Disney. Then we go to Ashley Tisdale and her version of Last Christmas. Oh, that's the one that's on the compilation. <laughs> I love that <laughs> one too. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the fuck that, that album's called. It's like it has the drawing, the stick figure guy. And the artist is really famous for doing like art in LA. I can't remember the fucking. Anyways, it's like some charity album they release every few years. Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, okay, so but yeah, it's Ashley Tisdale, uh, Last Christmas. Okay, so it's Last Christmas is my favorite song. Ashley Tisdale, like still the goat, uh, Sharpay, um, but like. For real, uh, my dad actually liked Swam, so he had a best of CD, and I remember the song that I really liked out of that CD, and it was weird because that CD has a lot of their, um, a lot of their other popular songs, like Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, um, I'm not sure if it's Girl, It's Just a Matter of Time, or the one where he's, like, spending money on this girl they likes, mm-hmm. um, but Last Christmas is on it, the full, like, five-minute version and I remember just really enjoying it. I, I can't recall if that was elementary school or if it was um, like uh, middle school or something like that. And I thought like, wow, this is really cool. I think a part of it that also helped is the fact that that song actually did not get played much at all at Christmas. I later mm-hmm. learned that the reason this happened is because there was an ongoing uh, uh, lawsuit apparently like that had been going on since the song came out to yeah. like still current day and it was only dropped in like 2017 when George Michaels died but apparently Barry Manilow was very insistent that Last Christmas is technically a stolen song of uh of his original song uh, what's it called uh, can't, can't smile, smile without, without you, you. you. yeah, yeah. um So, like, I always liked it because I feel that because it didn't get spammed, I always felt like, yo, this is, like, the best Christmas song ever. On. Is that what the reason was? I I, I did know that there was a reason why it was, and I I heard there was some rights issue. I I always assumed it was something Wham-related. For those who don't know, it's technically not Wham that released the song. It's uh, Wham featuring George Michael, because I think he'd already left by that point. Yeah, no, nobody knows what happened to the other guy. It's so weird. Oh my god, this does sound like Last Christmas. <laughs> no, no, it for real, it is. Um, uh, I thought like it'd be cool if there was like a, a mix of the two, but because very Manilo, like literally, he kept apparently according to the wiki, he kept the lawsuit going until he died, and then after he died. Uh, Barry Manuel didn't even want to like bother with the estate of uh, George Michaels. He he just like let it drop. And I remember because the following Christmas, um, last Christmas hit number two that year. That's crazy. I, I mean, all this is blowing my mind. I, I never, for the record, last Christmas is not my personal favorite. But if I, it's a very close runner for number two. And depending on my mood, it might uh, might be number two. But yeah, that damn. Okay, uh, look, it's it's not just it's not just number two. Like because of that one year, even when ever oh, since last Christmas favorite, yeah. came out, weapon. No, I'm saying it was, I, I meant it's number two is in my favorite. Uh, but you were saying okay. Can I uh, inter- interrupt for a second just to uh, uh-huh. clear something up? It wasn't Barry Manilow yeah. himself. It was the publishing company Dick James Music that handled it's the always, lawsuit. It's always publishing companies that yeah, actually fucking do it. Publishing yeah. company. But in theory, <laughs> I'm pretty sure like. Without knowing the full details, and some, I'm sure JD will put a big disclaimer up top when like we we fact check this more in the editing. 
but I'm willing to bet that when George Michael died, his his end of the publishing company's like, yeah, fuck it, we'll just give you whatever money you want to. You leave us the fuck alone. Uh, or, or or they just added him. At, that's typically what they usually do. They're just like, fine, fine, we'll give you some of the publishing and we'll add you as a songwriter. I'm not gonna lie though, this sounds so much like Last Christmas, like all of it, like it even like the no, the no, whole melody. Real. The yeah, whole melody and, is so similar. And it, it's not just that, okay? So after this lawsuit dropped, there are other songs that exist that very blatantly are either, depending on who you're talking to, they are the Last Christmas or they are the Can't Smile Without You. And these other songs are, um, what's it called? Leave Before You Love Me by, uh, what's it called? The Jonas Brothers. And then the most the most recent, I don't know if there's someone else who's done it, the most recent version of this song is Panic at the Disco's Don't Let the Light Go Out. Don't let the light go out. Um, it's from their last, it's their latest and last album since yeah. Panic just broke up. The f***? <laughs> this is not, what is happening? No, and this song is actually all the songs are pretty sad for one reason or another, but I want you to I want you to follow with me. There is a timeline to all these songs. This is the melody verse. So it starts off with I can't smile without you, okay? So this song is saying I can't smile without you because this person broke up with them and they're finding it really hard to move on. And then the song Last Christmas is essentially this person saying, like, let's let's pretend they broke up with them a year from that point. So Last Christmas is now playing, and the guy who's singing it is saying that he'll never give his heart to somebody again so carelessly. Now, we skip to the Jonas Brothers, where now we have a role shift, okay? The Jonas Brothers' Leave Before You Love Me song is the perspective of the person who is leaving oh the other God. person. Essentially, <laughs> essentially saying that... Essentially, but here's a line. Here's a line. Here's why I'm trying to tie it together, okay? There's a line in the, uh, what's it called? Guy, Leave Before You Love Me, Okay. And the line is um, 100 on the dash, okay? It's just a metaphor because he left that person at, in their bed yeah. and he's driving 100 on the dash, okay? Now, don't let the light go out is... That's one way to look at it, but keep going. Don't <laughs> or let you the can light... just beat him for sex, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, don't let the light go out is... Um... At first, it just feels like a, a sad song. It feels like it could be a breakup song if you're just listening to, like, the main chorus. But if you're listening to the lyrics as it's going on, it's very apparent that this is a song dedicated to someone who is dying. Someone that you just cannot live without them. And it's very much apparent that all the imagery is from the hospital bed. So my thoughts are when this other person was like living this live fast lifestyle and just not wanting to like attach themselves to anyone they get into a horrible car accident which leads the original lover to be like the only other person there when they're passing away so, oh well oh if i'm reading too much God. if i'm reading too much into it but like the song uh don't let the light go out is very much a uh, song that you dedicate to somebody when they're passing whether it be that you have regrets for them passing or just quite simply that you cannot live with that so what, what you're like, trying what you're trying to tell us is that don't let the light go out on go, go don't let the light go out is the yeah. conclusion to the story that barry manilow started like yes oh my if, and then, if you like, even just happened in the, the middle you, but yeah, yeah. But I think it's more implied that whoever you're singing the song to and Don't Let the Light Go Out, it could either be like, let's say, like, because Don't Let the Light Go Out isn't specifically lover-based. It could be like, let's say one of your parents is dying, or like it could be your lover, or it could be your grandma, or it could be a parent. This person is very important since the lyrics and their state lines like, who's going to drive me home tonight? Who's going to argue until they win the fight? Um... And pretty much you're the only one who knows how to handle my heavy machinery. So you get me? Uh, I'm looking at I'm sorry, I'm I'm also on the last Christmas page and not only did Crazy Frog do a cover of it, which I never want to hear, I'm not gonna hear it. <laughs> but um <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh look, here's the Aragonda Grande one, here's Carly Ray Jepsen did a version recently. Well, not recently, but okay. like, during 
Okay, oh, here's what I think we, about the Christmas album. What the fuck? Have I never heard this? Santa Claus Lane. Okay, hold on. Here's what I think though. Ariana Grande. Going back to Ariana Grande. Okay, I have a like head splitting uh what's it called conspiracy theory uh that can go up with like the leave the world behind movie that came out just recently okay i have this big level conspiracy theory that ariana grande's version of uh last christmas can mesh all versions <laughs> of the songs together with the melody just, like think of it as starting off last christmas and then by second chorus, put in, uh, what's it called? Um, I can't smile without you. And by the time that we're reaching the very end of it, you can have it split between there because of how the different lines just mesh so damn well. Also, Brendan Yuri so, is guilty. Why is he guilty? What did he do? The, there's keep going, keep going. We don't need to talk about it. Are you trying to say that? Are you trying to say that? Hold on, sorry. Are you trying to say that? That what we should do is make the crazy mashup version of them all together, dude. I can't but get using, over this. You have to way, use I... the um. You have to use the Ariana Grande hip hop like mix to it. It's funny because I heard that you mentioned that before we went live, and I was listening to it when you got up and left for a minute. And I yeah. do not like that version that much, but <laughs> <laughs> I am willing to hear this mashup. Also, I gotta say, I love Panic at the Disco's first album. I mentioned it in a past podcast that was yeah. the podcast it was a stream i did where i mentioned that's one of my favorite like albums as an album their first album and i'm not a huge mm -hmm. panic at the disco fan otherwise but i love this song i'm, I'm actually you like, do love the don't let the light go out yeah I'm, that's going no on it's really now. it's really good and i remember like this was funny uh, i went to one of their last concerts a year ago and i remember that my sister asked if I had even heard the new album. I told her, like, no, I had months to hear it. And I said, I hadn't heard it. And so then she, along with her friend, Tawny, they both look at each other and say, yeah, that album sucks. They they, they were pretty much saying, like, it's one of their weaker albums. That's what everyone albums. always says. Everyone, that's what I've always heard. I watched a fucking hour deep dive into it because I was bored one day and I just watched it. And they tore the yeah. album apart. And I'm hearing this song and I'm like, who knows? Maybe no, it's no. only a good song. But I'm like. This sounds so good. No, no, it's so good because it's it's can't last Christmas. Christmas slash can't smile without you. It's that using a melody that like that is true. That is true. <laughs> it's so good because it's 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 the mash. It's the closing to the to the last to the can't smile without you MCU or whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not MCU, like, but the the city extended the city universe. Yes. Yeah, the EU, the whatever the fuck that you. <laughs> Now, now, before we move on, before we move on to your favorite Christmas song and then the, the one that we can't get away from unless it's the same song, but uh, there is one mashup you got to check out. I recommend look up right now Anthem Lights. It's Last Christmas slash Leave Before You Love Me. Wait, wait what's just Leave Before You Love Me? Leave Before Leave Before You Love Me is sung by the Jonas Brothers, and it came out oh, in 2021. The um, hey. uh, Anthem Lights is an acapella group. Um, <gasps> yeah, no, I. It sounds so okay. I'm not because I didn't hear the "Leave Before You Love Me" earlier. Yeah, and twash. <laughs> it's, it's copyright claim. Let's start singing. <laughs> oh my. Okay, the, I like how easily they mix together, even though they they're not supposed to. I guess that's the whole thing we're talking about here. <laughs> Oops. Fun fact: uh, I mentioned this. Uh, I don't get too deep in the weeds here because it doesn't exist, so I can't really go into too much details anyway. But there was a point when, and I think it was mentioned here and there in some streams about two years ago. There was a point when I was working on a Christmas album. Like, just it's a long story, but we'll just leave it at that. Uh, like a digital release, you know, SoundCloud. Not SoundCloud, but, um, you know, a digital release Christmas album. Um, some friends of mine were, were helping, and there was, like, some internet people who were going to appear on it, uh, vocal-wise. vocal, vocal -wise. But I remember it was it, it was kind of like, hard to get some songs because of licensing but without getting too deep in the numbers here last christmas was surprisingly affordable um really yes and what blew my mind about the okay it blew my mind that it's a well-known song and so affordable maybe, maybe that's why it's so well known because everyone can cover it like crazy if they really want but mm -hmm. also more important than that i'm like how the fuck was it so cheap if like there's all this legal issues around it or is it or is that why they're like we need to recoup our money <laughs> like, we've been fighting a legal battle for 30 years 
Um, uh, also, this is not my favorite song, and I'm gonna glance over this one real fast. But it is one of my favorite ish ones. It's also covered a lot. Happy Christmas, War is Over, the John Lennon and, and Yo- Yoko Ono oh, one. That yeah. song is really, it's really affordable to license. I don't want to say cheap, but it's really affordable to license. Uh, and part of me wonders if that was like if that's on purpose. Like I assume Yoko Ono like runs I mean, has the publishing for that now, obviously, because John Lennon's not alive. But mm-hmm. It's set so affordable. I'm like, is that why everyone covers this? Um, it's a good song though. It, it's a, uh, it, it's it's a little uh, the more political ones. Like, I, I play the I have a lot of Christmas playlists, and I play that Band Aid one. The mm-hmm. Do they know it's Christmas? Yeah, no. Uh, I wanted to like one... bring this up earlier with the the last Christmas thing. Also, really quick from Delulu God, the panic has gone downhill since everyone left. And also, I hate Yoko Ono. Now, before we get to why I want to hear why she's <laughs> insufferable, but first, I just want to say that you remember how I said last Christmas was ranked number two. Uh huh. Last Christmas has always come a uh, second fiddle to other songs that came out around the same time like the band-aid one you just described is uh-huh. the one that was getting oh, number one yeah at the... <laughs> yeah they so the like year. well the band-aid one has like a ton of huge names behind it like i think bono is one of the obvious big ones you too bono um yeah but the, but the band-aid one has some some lyrics i remember like even as a kid when i would like you know hear it and you're like whoa you know about like the only what is it the only uh what snow they'll get is something like that like the the bitter sting of tears and whatever like you know basically it's people starving in africa and it's yeah. like whoa but it's still a good song is that, is that, is that insensitive to say but uh, i mean it's a good song and i'm sure it served its purpose obviously it was, i hope it did and for all i know that money got mishandled but it was for charity also Probably. i will admit i will admit that yoko ono is fairly inseparable there's a very famous uh video that i, I i've always known about not to say i'm, I'm like clever or whatever but i've always known about it but it's gone viral recently where john lennon when he was still alive got to play with chuck berry and chuck berry's mm-hmm. a questionable figure too but we're not gonna go into that right now but you know chuck berry father of rock and roll chuck berry whatever um obviously john lennon looks up to this guy he's playing with him on this tv show it's this huge moment for him and then fucking yoko ono is doing her like crazy vocalizations and like in the background like she always does and just ruining mm-hmm. the whole thing and eventually uh and if you watch the whole clip not what tiktok shows you somebody cuts off her mic and if you watch earlier you see john run off stage run back and then when she's st- yoko starts singing the next part they cut off her mic and i'm pretty sure that when he left he was probably like if she sings again cut off her mic <laughs> Holy we don't know that for sure but if you watch the whole clip, he runs off stage comes oh back my gosh. and yeah because when she starts singing and like I use the term singing very loosely. When she starts There's vocalization singing, in the air yeah. quotes. And mind you, they're doing, they're doing, they're not doing anything experimental. They're doing fucking Johnny Be Good. You know, they're doing Johnny Be Good or some shit. And she's going in the background. I'm not even exaggerating. She's going in the background like, ah! Like that. Like for real. Like just like, you know, like screeching and stuff. And yeah. Chuck's all like, what the fuck? Like, it's even, that's the part that everyone goes on TikTok. There's a part where he's like, what you know what's going on behind me <laughs> and yeah and also she she's uh i don't know the, there's stories about her but you you can apparently get uh uh happy xmas war is over cheap because i mean well not cheap it's not want to say cheap but it's not cheap but affordable if you want to cover it thank you for she's, bringing it back on topic manual <laughs> yeah she's vocalization screaming into the mic uh, thankfully, if you do want to listen to the John and Yoko version of uh, of Happy Xmas War is Over, she does not vocalize on that version. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like it's like it's like Imagine where she kind of just stands around. Uh, she's there in the beginning, like she she speaks like Happy Christmas, you know, you know John, Happy Christmas, Yoko, or whatever the fuck they're saying it to. And uh, mm-hmm. it's funny because I never actually heard their version that much. I only hear covers, but yeah. Anyways, my favorite Christmas song though, and I'm gonna actually I'm not gonna cheat. I'm gonna just say what it is, um, because it's a Japanese one, and it's uh, Christmas Eve by Tatsuro Yamashita. I think you mm-hmm. might have heard it at the panel, or both of you. Yes, you mentioned it at the panel, but I've mentioned and it before count- countless times. I just fucking love that song. Also, if you have never heard it, go check it out. It is the best Japanese Christmas song of all time, without a doubt. Not even by own my own measure. I think it's the um 
to the country standard. What the fuck is the I can't, uh, the Mariah Carey one? What the fuck is it called? Uh, all I want for uh, Christmas is you. Yeah, it's that of yeah. Japan. It's that of Japan. <laughs> Because it's like, depending on who you are, you probably hate it there too. You're probably like, oh god, you know, <laughs> like not this one again. Uh, it's also covered countless times, officially or not. There's also an English version because this isn't Japanese, and I love the English version because uh, there's a part where he says "Silent Night, Holy Night," and no, it's not done to the tune of "Holy Night," but he says those words. But when he says "Holy Night," only in the English one, he says "Holy Night," like he, he like throws the H out there. But he doesn't do that in the Japanese one. So I can only imagine he had an English coach for that song, because it is good English, except for that part. And the English coach was probably either trolling him, or was like, you got to pronounce the H more. <laughs> and he did. Much to my de- much to my disappointment. But... <laughs> just the, the disappointment of just the coach on that particular moment, or the fact that they could have, like, re-recorded it and that was like the best take in that they well, could I'm use. Pretty, I'm willing to bet that, that nobody even knows really about the English version. So it was probably a mad afterthought. And I wouldn't doubt it if they only had that one take. He's like, but you could tell that like, and Tashira Yamashita definitely, you know, I'm sure he knows some degree of English. I think he, technically he wrote those lyrics, but, um, and they're not bad lyrics. They're not like English lyrics, so to speak. Is that right? Can, can we still say that? I don't know. But anyway, uh, uh, but they're not bad lyrics, but um, the it, it, I'm pretty sure like he had a coach for like a lot of people do. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. Like metal bands have it from Europe if they you know English coach, and I can only imagine that because why the fuck was that not in the Japanese version? I don't know. Speaking of I um, all I want for Christmas is you. I'm a huge fan of that song too, and that would be my my cheating second choice if I had to pick a a more well known one. But plot twist. Plot twist. I'm indifferent to the Mariah Carey version. Oh, oh, here we go. So this is where we get into it. It's a good song, but... Now, I don't want to say I don't like her version or it's my least favorite version. It's neither of those. But I will tell you that I don't have her version on my playlist and I don't like her Christmas album. That's the only good song on her Christmas album. She has two of them, by the way, but I don't don't even count the second one. But that's the only good song she has on it, in my opinion. Um, Also, I'm a huge fan of Oh Holy Night. If you're, but I, but like, I don't think I could ever, I wouldn't, I don't really put that on my playlist because that's not really like, I just like hearing a good version of it. I just like hearing singers do good things sometimes, you know. Mm-hmm. It was really, I thought that up because she has an okay version of Oh Holy Night on her one, one of hers. But all I want for Christmas is you. I, I, I don't want to be too stereotypical, but I do like the My Chemical Romance one. Oh, huh. Uh, yeah. The, the, that that one was for I, I can't remember what yeah. compilation that one was made for, but that was made for the compilation like way way back, like in two thousand and two or something. Or wait, maybe that's too soon because then they were even no, around. It, it would have to be but like two thousand and five, two thousand six, somewhere eight, around so, there. But it was during the early times. I don't remember exactly when, but like, um, but the only reason I bring that up, the only reason I bring that up, is because every fucking year somebody like discovers it for the first time. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. But every mm-hmm. every year, someone discovers it for the first time, and there's always all those comments. And I'm not one of them. I'm not going to be an asshole. I like that version, too. But there's always all the comments who are like, this is actually really old. Did you know that? And it's like, leave them alone. Still a good version. Um, also, because I'm a China boo, there's this group called called 12 <laughs> Girls Band. And they're like an instrumental group that do that play like uh, traditional Chinese instruments, but like modern arrangements. And they have a Christmas album that not only has, um, you know, sort of Chinese classical arrangements of uh, Last Christmas, Christmas Eve, and All I Want for Christmas is You. But the reason I mentioned that is because, like, I think those, especially Last Christmas and All I Want for Christmas is You, those are really good versions of those songs. It's not a phase, Mom, yes. I mean, but yeah. Lulu God knows the score. There, there's, some good, there's some good Christmas songs, though. JD, what's your favorite one? Ooh, that's a good question. Did we take it already? Because it's the last Christmas. Uh, last Christmas. <laughs> last Christmas is like my, one of my sleeper favorites, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Like I always forget it. it I don't want to say I forget it exists, but like I forget the Wham version exists. That's the best way to put that. Okay, I, I don't think I'm allowed to forget that the Wham version exists. <laughs> uh, but if I had to pick one, like that, I, I'd probably listen to the most by myself, like just to listen to. I like the 
Eagles cover of Please Come Home for Christmas. Oh. Yeah, I first discovered it when take. I Yeah, when I bought their uh I think it's on the greatest hits album. That's where I first listened to it. Oh. Um shit. I don't know why that made me made me remember like, you know, this, but there's a really good song from the Santa Claus 2 soundtrack called Naughty Naughty Christmas. <laughs> and uh it's by this, and I'm not making any of this up. It's by this group called Danger Danger, whose big hit in the 80s was a song called Naughty Naughty. And then they rewrote it to be Naughty Naughty Christmas for that, that movie. And mm-hmm. it's a really good song. Uh, that's probably like, and like I mentioned, and it's original. It's not like, you know, it's not a cover of anything. And it's one of theirs. But that's a good song. Everyone check that one out. And I think it's on a bunch of compilations uh, after that. Because who the fuck owns the Santa Claus 2, the Santa Claus 2 soundtrack? Disney. <laughs> well, that, that too. But I mean, like, can you even buy that on CD anymore? I, I don't know. But yeah. Um, it's lost media. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, like I, ma- I managed to get, like, I'm, I'm, I assume it's legal. I don't know. But, like, you, you can actually find a lot of Christmas sound movie soundtracks on uh, the, inter- the Internet Archive. Um, so I don't know how I assume it's legal because it's on like the the, the forward facing web, but yeah, <laughs> like I had to go somewhere shady for it. Oh, Fall Out Boy has a Christmas song. I, don't I think see Fall that. Out, I think Fall Out Boy has a Christmas. Oh wait, no, that's nothing about another group. Fall Out Boy Christmas. Um, fun fact: the the guy who does Feliz Navidad. Oh, that too. That, no, that's this, on my list. Jose Feliciano, and no, this is not one of those silly like uh. Actually, let me Google this real fast. Hold on. So it's Feliciano, right? <laughs> Sorry, I just saw the name of either the song or like the album. You'll shoot your eye out. Oh. But anyways, uh, I, when I was growing up, I knew somebody who was like related to Jose Feliciano, and I'm not gonna lie, I was like, oh, sure you do. That's like a my uncle works at Nintendo thing, you know, the Christmas version. <laughs> sure you do. Um, but uh. At one point, they, that person uh, went to like the local church, and she had a Christmas thing, and she was in one of the musicals I was in in high school. Yeah, I was in musicals, by the way, but one of the musicals I was in in high school. So, and then she was a good friend of mine. So like, I'll go to your Christmas program at like the church, and I was like, Feliciano was there, <laughs> like with her, <laughs> and they did. I'm like, oh shit! And mind you, the church like did the, kept it as a secret because they didn't want to like, I, I don't know if they would have been, but maybe they would have, but they didn't want to be like mobbed. So it's like, oh, a special mm. guest was Jose Feliciano. And uh, funny enough, I don't think they did Feliz Navidad, which is funny. I don't remember like hearing, I don't have, this isn't going to turn to like, yeah, I heard Jose Feliciano do it himself. But yeah, <laughs> so technically, I knew somebody who was close enough related to, is that, I think it was her uncle or some shit, um, that he actually showed up at like, you know, her Christmas program. Uh, but anyways. What did you say? Oh yeah, JD said his favorite song. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll wrap it up. Any other songs we want to mention? Fall Out Boy is a good song. You'll shoot your is that what the you'll shoot your eyes out? Yes. That, that, that's that's why pun. I was laughing. You'll oh you'll <laughs> you I, I kind of I kind of thought that like in the uh what's it called? The album that has sugar we're going down swinging, there's actually a lyric to the first song that says, um uh, because what, what's that first song in the uh, album? The what's it called? The ribbon on my wrist says, "Please don't open before Christmas" or something like that. Oh, what? It's it's in the first song to the album because the next song okay, is first honey. Of all, that's, a, that's a very emo line. I want. It's a point. very <laughs> emo line. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, uh, Potaka, I looked it up. Before... Or, I looked it up. Uh, the first song on that album is "Our Lawyer Made Us Change the Name of This Song So We Wouldn't Get Sued." <laughs> I fucking can't. St- okay, I say this is a joking way, but I fucking can't stand emo title song titles sometimes. <laughs> like, what is that title? It, it, okay, it's like- to be fair, to be fair, I think they were just having this moment where before emo really took off, like because like emo was like a very two thousand five thing. I feel you know Hawthorne Heights, Fall Out Boy, um, uh, to an, an extent, I'll say Panic, but I really feel like Panic wasn't completely emo. Um, no, no, and not. then, you know, My Chemical Romance. Uh, but with that particular song line and the fact that it's in their first... Uh, it's not their first album, but that's like the first song in that album. It reminds me a lot of the um, the album for... Uh, what's it called? Maroon 5? You know, the one that has This Love? Oh, yeah. 
It's the second track. But you know how the first track is called um, Breathe or yeah. Harder to Breathe? Okay, so you hear that song and you think that, oh, this song must be about a very toxic lover that makes it hard for Adam Levine to breathe. It turns out the whole song is a big middle finger to the record company. So that's why there's a second version of the exact same album where it's like, there's no art. It's literally just all the band members as if they're like in a studio. So there's like a second album that's also really like, it, it's the same album with some slightly different alterations on the songs, but they're, they're parallel. So there's like the, 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 the um, official release version. And then there's like their version in a sense, but harder to breathe is, a fuck you to the record label type song it's the record label that makes it harder and harder to breathe as they tried to warn us before they did what they did to taylor swift there's um it's funny because this did happen around i went to this concert around christmas time so it's technically still related but i went to go see this concert by this this it's this brand called california breed they don't exist anymore they barely existed but it was like the super group that had like glenn hughes bass and vocals like uh uh, Jason Bonham on drums and like this young guitarist kid who was like this uh, joined the band kind of out of nowhere was very very talented and Glenn Hughes used to be in Deep Purple whatever was like the very drugged up person in the 80s like now he's like a born again Christian very clean very like you know whatever so when he was doing the show he was like he, he doesn't curse doesn't drink doesn't do anything he was like talking about this one song he's like yes I'm gonna let uh, I think his name was Andrew something like let him introduce the song it was being very polite very like talking very slowly and then the guitarist comes up he's like yeah this song is about the motherfuckers that run the music industry (laughs) 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 he's all Glenn Glenn was like Glenn looked confused but by that point the drummer uh, Jason Jason Bonham had already started started the song so he had to just keep playing and he was like what the fuck yeah the music industry sucks guys (laughs) Out of Spotify, no one. Uh, no, Chances no one, uh, are they're not. If they're singing about an angry relative, or if they're singing about a girlfriend, double the- check that. That might be metaphorical, give or take the particular uh, time and place yeah, of that fact, group. I don't remember the song anymore, but if I saw the album, I, I remember what song it was. But like uh, the the song, the, the song also was a song that I thought was about like. A bad woman or you know a bad breakup or some shit like that but no it's singing about like you know the industry or probably someone specific that fucked the band over at some point so it's like damn <laughs> anyways they, they probably yeah. they, they, they just yeah the record <laughs> the record company is that guy from the movie wish he's like we can't have them sting they'll be revolutionary we can't have that <laughs> they need to know their place (laughs) i decide who becomes famous everyone everyone has to go for homework has to go watch last christmas i think it's on it's on prime for sure but maybe it's on other services it stars daenerys from amelia clark (laughs) it stars daenerys she's playing her daenerys (laughs) she calls for she calls for drogo i don't remember the dragon's name anymore it's named after the dude though drogon Um, Oh, gone. There you go. <laughs> I've watched, I'm a Game a... of Thrones fan, but yeah, the the movie the movie's the movie's interesting. I, I think I like it. I don't know, but uh, it has some interesting twists. Uh, also, I'll be home for Christmas. This is my favorite Christmas movie. Throw it out there. So watch those two. It's those... uh, Home Alone for me. Oh wait, Home Alone. Come on. I still got one more Christmas song. That oh, which one? Okay. The OTS somewhere in my memory by uh john williams is still oh. so fucking good yeah. oh my god i will take the 700 not 700 the seven minute full ass you hear essentially the entire like um it's it's like it's kind of like uh what's it called when the whole track is just kind of elevating through all the different beats or the background songs yeah Movie. it's so amazing i even forgot that the chorus part in the middle of the movie is actually being sung at that time it's so good you you genuinely feel all the emotion and build up when you get to the end yeah it's fun like, fact i don't know if it still is but the home alone soundtrack and that song is on there is also one of the ones that's on uh that's on the internet archive at least it was very recently like like two months ago <laughs> so uh, everyone check that because it's funny. I was thinking that exact song. Like, what's that Home Alone song? I couldn't like the, the Home Alone yes. theme it, or whatever you want to call it. It's literally 
literally somewhere in my memory. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I'm getting through the melody so fucked up, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, and if you want to watch Home Alone, you either have to go to Disney Plus or one of my friendly sites that JD's going to censor if I actually say it, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Let's just watch the first two. You're, you're good. Just yeah. the first two. And laugh, point and laugh at a certain point in the. Well, the other ones called? aren't even Christmas movies, are they? Uh, we're getting into the weeds here, but only Manual, the last one. Is these still... are supposed to be Final Thoughts, not Home Alone. They're <laughs> no. both Christmas movies. No, but the other ones aren't. Only the first two and the most recent one are Christmas movies. The other three aren't. No, we don't, don't. We don't, don't talk watch about the those. Other, yeah, don't watch them anyway. But they're, they're not Christmas movies. Like, as in, they don't take place during Christmas. Elf. And it's not Christmas. Oh my God, Elf! Hey, that's a good movie. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> Okay, guys, everyone, go watch all the movies. Go watch, uh, let's go watch them all. Like, the, the, there's a bunch, of, there's a bunch free on Tubi. Weirdly enough, the Christmas Carol that I love, the one that has George Scott, is that his name? The the, the guy, yes, from I Ninja believe Turtles? so. Uh, well, Wait, guy, Ninja the, Turtles, George Scott, George Scott is the old guy, the guy from Ninja Turtles, and the guy from uh, I'm gonna forget his name, the guy from Scream 2, he's like the, the director of the musical. Uh, oh. I'll look it up, man. I'll keep going. Did you know he died? The other day I was watching The Christmas Carol and I was like, oh, he's so fucking good. Like, he's also in Scream 2. I should have mentioned how good he was in Scream 2 when we talked about the... Because he has that, he has that like... He's also in The Omen. He gets his head cut off. And then uh, I Googled him to see what he was in recently and he died like two years ago. And I was like, what the fuck? Dead in 2020, I think, actually. Which is probably explains why I didn't know because so much is going on that year. But anyway, what's his name? George Scott is the guy who's, who plays Everybody's the Screws. But I meant the guy who plays... Uh, who plays David Tiny Warner? Tim's father. David Warner, thank you. George Scott <laughs> is the guy who plays Everything the Screws, but David Warner plays. The fuck is it? Cratchit. Cratchit. Bob Cratchit. Anyways, Tiny <laughs> Tim. Tiny Tim signing out. <laughs> and uh, watch the uh, Love Actually, a apparently <laughs> a British love uh, Christmas rom com featuring every damn Brit. Yes, I'll say Brit. Uh, from John Hughes, Alec Rickman, Mr. Fucking Bean, um, Liam Neeson. Actually, Liam Neeson isn't British. He's hey, Irish. Like, oh, he's not. He's Irish. Oh, so, so I got a lot of Irish people mad at me. He's not English, English. He's Irish. <laughs> Oops. And the most Brit British. of all of them, the most Brit of all of them with his amazing 10 to 5 minute cameo, Billy Bob Thornton as the <laughs> president of the United States. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, we'll close on that note. Fun fact: I don't know. Who, I remember who it was. Some I remember somebody saying like, "Scott, Scots and Irish. They're not British. Wait, they're not English, but they are British. That's what the, that's what the thing is. Because so something has to do. It has something to do with the region or some bullshit. I don't know. So someone's gonna get mad at me and say I fucked up even saying that. So I apologize in advance. I should have shut up. Anyways, uh, tomorrow we're playing Final Fantasy VII. Fun fact: I pull. I should. I should. I should have kept it up here so I could have showed you guys. I dug out my Final Fantasy VII strategy guide because the part we're gonna do next, like the stupid snow fields, are so fucking confusing. I need a visual representation in my hand to figure it out. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, uh, the snow fields. Yes, they are god awful. <laughs> yes. I actually had that same book because a yes. friend let me it when I played it on my PS2. Exactly. Here, enjoy. There are like. Two gram there's like five different grammatical inc yes. inconsistencies on there. I like how one of them says that you can't get to the mountaintops without the gold chocobo, and I'm like, I got there easy with the black chocobo. There's a what lot of mistakes in that about? book. It tells you that you can't get Aerith's last limit break um, until she dies. It says you need a gold chocobo to get to it. First of all, that guy must not have explored shit until he got the gold chocobo. Whoever wrote it. Exactly. That's what I'm feeling too. <laughs> He got there a was... chocobo and then wrote it. <laughs> oh, man. No. Anyway, so yeah, we're playing uh, 5 on 7 tomorrow, and then Friday's right, DJ yeah. Talk World. And they're, they're both going to be the last of the year. Sorry, I'm like dying here. Uh, so next week will be dark. But yeah, and then UPZ, I mean, UPZ should be coming back on the 16th for sure, but maybe the 9th. Because we're skipping next week for because it's the day after Christmas, and then we're skipping the, the day after New Year's. But we're coming back either the 16th or the 9th. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Good night, night, everybody. Thank you again for watching. Good night. Check out, check out the YouTube episodes. Oh check yeah, them all check, out, out. check out the YouTube. Check out uh, the 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 two. What is it? Peak Field Podcast. Peace.